Hello, a very good evening to you. Well, after some of the cold and wet earlier Prudential World Cup cricket matches we've had, the summer arrived just in time today to make this semi-final day stunningly memorable. We really couldn't have wished for two better cricket matches. You can imagine what it was like here at the Oval, with the West Indies playing Pakistan in front of a noisy, colourful crowd and a pretty full house at that. And at Old Trafford, England against New Zealand, and for that, we hear first of all from Peter West. Down the wicket again and hitting it over the infield on the leg side for four runs. So the run's beginning to tick up a little quicker now. Really moves to 42. And the England total is now in the 60s. 61 for two in the 27th over. And uh, that's one run for Brearley, two, and he might have to hurry. As indeed he did, it was a useful throw from Glenn Turner. And that brings Brearley to 49. Played square on the offside. Turner losing his sun hat. The ball was in the hand just about the time that Brearley set off. And a good decision by the umpire, Ken Palmer. So, Brearley on 49. That's it. And you can have two here. So, Mike Brearley gets a very good hand from almost a full house in the sunshine at Old Trafford. And Swifty took him 108 minutes off 112 balls, three fours. And a nice firm shot and a very good stop by Glenn Turner. The gooch is limited to a couple. Nearly 53 out of 86 for two. This is Brian McKechnie, New Zealand's rugby fullback. And so far bowled five overs, one wicket for 16, the wicket of Larkins. There's a big hit. A big one indeed, a beautiful shot. Just underneath our cameras, clearing the sight screen by... with plenty to spare. Ninety-two for two, 25 to Gooch. Beginning to look very impressive. Beautifully timed off the back foot, and that's still got a lot of run on it. I'm really not a fast outfield. Another magnificent shot from Graham Gooch. He started to come forward. Uh, it wasn't quite there, and so he went back and played it on the up off the back foot and pierced the offside. And he's out caught behind Lise Coney, the bowler. Really uh, trying to run that down through uh, a third slip area. Nice catch by Warren Lease, the New Zealand uh, wicketkeeper. keeper. Really has gone for 53, made out of 96 for four, or three rather. 96 for three in the 34th over. Sweetly time shot to be off the mark, a half volley, just caressed away. Gower's really pushing his luck, he's run himself out. Now what an astonishing decision that Gower made there. Here it is again. Coney, who may be a little uh, less plain than he looks. Bowls mostly a good line and length. There's the first shot pushed through, and it's Gar who decides to come back for a second with Cairns's throw, pretty accurate, and he's run out by about a yard or more. Authoritative shot. 
Correct. And Dan Birch to cover. And that's 100 up for England in the 35th over. Gooch moving to 31. Whatever well, the situation is right at the moment, England mustn't lose another wicket. Good looking shot by Botham. And it's through for four. Gooch is on 44 as Gary Troop comes in. Uh, really picked that one up nicely. That goes through for four runs wide of mid on. And Gooch in great form once again here at Oak Trafford goes on now to 48. Troop to Gooch. And he's found the gap this time. Successive boundaries will take Graham Gooch. Another fine 50. Beautifully controlled off drive. So an on drive and an off drive. Consecutive boundaries takes Graham Gooch on to 52. Another really fine innings. Coming on here, 73 minutes. He's only received 61 balls, and it's exactly the sort of acceleration that England needed. Cairns to Botham. And he's out LBW. Went to try and hook one which was barely short of a length. The ball didn't rise as this ball has never risen here all day today. And Botham goes LBW to Cairns. He's out for 21. Just barely short of a length. See that ball hitting him even underneath the roll of the pad. Trundle now to face Lance Cairns. Oh, that's a lovely shot. That's going to do Derek Randler power of good. It's dropped short, but he put it away in most convincing style. Square on the off for four. He gets a tremendous round of applause for it. Richard Hadley starting a new over. That's a lovely shot. Nice piece of placement. Wasn't all that short, but cracked away off the back foot. The three runs in it here for uh, Graham Gooch. Graham Gooch on 69. Again, to should just be a single. They're coming up for the second. After Harry, and Rundle just uh, making his ground. moving now into the 70s a little delay there by Graham Gooch wasn't quite sure whether it was bold or whether it come off the keepers pads but uh, he's see there the off bail has just been dislodged fallen to the ground and Gooch goes for an excellent 71 makes England 177 for six and it's another wicket to Brian McCartney and no question at all that that's put the off stump and just removed one bear. So Graham Gooch falls, trying to force the pace over these uh, final ten overs. Out for an excellent 71, made out of 177 for six. It's Gary Troop again, and Warwick Road in to Randall. Chris Old has gone to Troop, caught behind down the offside by Warren Lees. Out for naught, and England are losing wickets a bit too rapidly now for comfort. So from the City End camera, the Warwick Road end. Moving that in, inside edge, and a nice catch by the New Zealand keeper, quite low down. So it's 178 for seven in the 52nd over, and England still haven't got enough runs. Oh, my goodness, there's trouble. Oh, and he's got away with it. He had to be uh, a goner if the throw from Hadley had been straight. But luckily for Taylor, it wasn't. 
a real mix up here, hitting uh, Taylor on the pad. And that's Kearns to Randall. He's hit that a long way away. It's a beautiful shot into the crowd. I reckon it just reached the front row of the stalls over Long On. Down the wicket, hitting him on the up. And away it goes. Clearing the Long On fielder by many a mile. Derek Randall ensuring that late momentum was maintained. Bob Taylor run out for 12, and England finishing with 221 for eight off their allotment of 60 overs. The question now was whether on this pitch, the total was enough. New Zealand wanting 222 at 3.7 and over. Not so daunting a task. And they got a very solid, useful start from their two left-handed openers, John Wright and Bruce Edgar. Here's the 15th over, 43 for no wicket, and it's Bob Willis bowling to John Wright. It's right this time. In front of square, it's four runs. Gar can't chase that. So it's an expensive over by Bob Willis. Seven runs off it. England at the same stage with 27 for one. They experienced a very sticky start indeed. Chris Old. And a big shot for LBW and he's gone. Edgar is LBW 12. England leading a wicket. They had to wait until the 16th over. The fourth one bowled by Chris Old. He's now taken one for six. It's 47 for one. And Edgar has gone for 17. And from the city end. It looks absolutely plum. Hitting the middle stump three quarters of the way up. Very confident start here by Geoffrey Howard. Another firm shot, beautifully timed. Four runs through extra cover. Say, so starting with an ominous assurance. Ominous from the English point of view. That was missing the leg stump. Whether or not it was hitting is a moot point. And he's given him out this time. Jeff Howarth has played across the full course and his LBW and no Yorkshire bowler had a better reaction to his first success here. Very much the hero of the moment, Jeff Boycott as a bowler. So there's been a great turn here, 58 for two. And Jeff Howarth, after a very promising start, has gone for eight for seven. And from this, you can see that Jeff played right across it, right round it. It looked as though it was knocking middle, middle and leg out. Hit him on the full, and there was never any doubt that he was going to have to go for that one. It's a full toss, and that's something that uh, Graham Birch can afford to bowl. Put away square on the leg side by right for four, and he goes on now to 47. Turn nicely over his legs, be anxious here for two, because that'll bring him 50, he's sprinting back, and he's safely home, and an exceptionally good 50 here from uh, John Wright, laying the foundation for this... New Zealand reply, and his 50 has come out of a total of 89 for two. Oh, really gave himself a bit of room that and fairly crushed it through the offside. Uh, Gow giving chase, but it's a hopeless chase. And that four to John Wright brings up the 100 for New Zealand. So here's also a fine performance. He moves on now to 60 out of a total of 102 for two. now to Coney and a confident shout gone up there and it's answered in the affirmative by umpire Palmer 
So England finally have broken this very stubborn stand, getting rid of Kona. He's LBW to Hendrick, 4 11. And New Zealand now are 104 for three in the 37th over. Hendrick uh, into Kona. And just going half forward there. And little doubt in the umpire's mind. A recall at the Warwick Road end for Chris Old. Who, uh, in his earlier spell, looked as dangerous as any English bowler. Started off with a short one, which is whipped around to boycott. There's nothing he can do about it, and it goes through for four. Quite a number of runs have come for John Wright from that particular shot, and uh, very often a bowler coming back hasn't quite got into the rhythm, and that dropped pretty short. Position pretty well for that. Didn't quite time it. He's coming back for a second. And he's going to be out. And it's a magnificent throw again by this remarkable performer. Lentana sent him back. What a day he's had in the field. Vintage Randall. Now let's see this incident again. Willis. Rolling to right, and he hits him away on the onside. Comes down. There is Randall with the ball in hand, and Glenn Turner sensing the danger, sending him back. And look at that for a throw. Still split five and four, five on the on, four on the off. Slip that up Ashley away, and he's been put down by Graham Gooch. Oh, there's more disaster and another run out. Then Turner has gone. Randall can't keep him out of the act. But that really was a suicidal run. It was never, never on. Boycott coming round the wicket. Put away on the onside. Turner keeps going. The throw comes back. They've crossed, and uh, Mark Burgess really has surrendered in a very sporting fashion. Hendrick again to Turner. Pushing the single, and it's Randall streaking in again, but he knows he's beaten this time. Lob back, and that single to Turner takes New Zealand under 150. So the target of 150 reached in the 50th over. Final over of the uh, day's play for Bob Willis. And he's out LBW. Up goes the umpire's finger again, and Glenn Turner goes. So Willis strikes in his very final over here. His first wicket of the day and an important one too. And Turner driving across a perfectly good straight length ball and that's the fourth LBW decision answered in favour of the England bowlers. Hendrick back in the attack to Lees. That's away to boycott, he's underneath it, he's stepped over the ropes and it's six. Unfortunate there for uh, Boycott, took the catch well. And again, the field taking some while to settle. It's fixed now. Uh, it's both them to Hadley. And it's bowled him. Well, it's the sort of shots, the sort of cricket that New Zealand have got to pay, and uh, Hadley there paying the penalty. Noble effort uh, by Hadley. It's all really that was left for him to do. And the tactics were right, but unhappily he went down the wrong line. Nothing to Cairns. He's really cool out of that one, and that's what he's known for. It's a magnificent shot for six. Not only cleared the rope, it cleared the field and uh, was dropped right in amongst the big pack crowd here at Old Trafford. A great blow.
and he's caught. Well, that, I would imagine, must be the final nail in uh, New Zealand's coffin. And uh, England desperately need to see the back of Lance Gaines. He's really threatened them there with some powerful hitting. And crack that straight to Brealey at mid-wicket off the goal in a hundred. Wilson to Lees. That's a useful looking uh, cover drive. And the batsman goes through for three. So the 200 goes up. Uh, now for New Zealand, it's Hendrick to lose. And squeeze that away somehow. And the left side. And gets two runs for it. And he's yorked him. And the delivery pays off there for Hendrick. Perfect Yorker that. On leg stump. And the last pair, in fact, could only rustle up another four runs. So a second narrow victory for England, as at Headingley against Pakistan, altogether too close for English comfort. And when it was all over, Colin Cowdery decreed that the man of the match should be Graham Gooch. 71, and he made particular reference to one particular shot, a soaring straight six. And Keckley is the bowler, and up she goes. Well, Graham Gooch has been in pretty good form recently, and we only hope that he can reproduce some of it in the final at Lords on Saturday. Well, what a match that was. Just nine solitary runs in it at the end.